Hey guys, it's Warrior Chick and welcome back to The Wolf Among Us. So, good news is Snow White is not dead. She's right here. Bad news is now I'm confused as heck and I don't really know where to go with my investigation. I'm not happy that she just happened to walk in, as much as I was very glad to see her alive. She just happened to walk in when I was intervening when Tweedle, whatever, D, I think, when Tweedle D was, you know, getting punched. And, you know, I intervened and then I looked like a violent dude. But really, I was trying to be good and take the non-violent route, but somehow I feel like I'm being framed and someone's out to get me and we gotta find whoever that that is, but I feel like there's a lot of magic involved. We saw how Ichabon Crane used a memory wipe spell on a bunch of cops, and that just kind of made me think, oh wow, okay, Glamour is not the only spell we're dealing with, so there's probably a whole bunch of stuff, maybe like black market stuff that, you know, the, the most of the population wouldn't know about, but uh, Snow White mentioned that someone possibly could have glamoured to look like her and that could have gotten her killed, so whether or not that was done purposefully or if someone was actually out to get snow, I, I have seriously no clue, but I kind of like being confused. I feel like that'll make me be more thorough so I don't accidentally have to uh, uh, slap toads to get answers. We're not, we're not trying to be the big bad wolf, we're trying to be the big good wolf. Even though it doesn't really have the same ring, trying to be good. Um, so we got a whole bunch of new entries in this book. Which confused me because I noticed that we have two bluebeards here, and also two big bees. And they say mercy, it, it says big bees mercy, and then we also saw bluebeards mercy. So I, I'm not really sure what this means, but I'm gonna take a quick read and see if this, I don't know, gives us anything. I think these are actually gonna have a lot of information in them that'll be really, really good when we start our investigation, so I'm gonna read them. Read them all. So let's read this one. In the days leading up to the exodus, the big bad wolf hunted armies of men and goblins in the Black Forest. These invading forces had driven off the great beast's preferred quarry, and their own flesh was rotten with corruption. Hardly a suitable replacement. He made it his game to destroy their camps, devour their night watchmen, and disrupt their supply trains while sparing their prisoners. One day, he broke their ranks and discovered a particular woman they held captive. Her skin was white as snow, but her hair was dark as the night sky. He approached her, and she, knowing no sword could match the giant wolf's power, bravely placed her shackles in the beast's mouth. He freed her, but years would pass before the two would met again in the Mundy world. Oh, so, so he, he saved her! Oh, maybe that's why they had that... A connection. Oh, but then again, there's that whole issue of memory, and who who remembers what? I don't know how vivid that memory would be in either of their heads, but clearly, you know, there's an undoubtable connection. But then again, I think I totally got shut down by Snow. She was, yeah, she. It could be she's a little bit mad that I was getting a little violent, which is fair, but. I don't know, I was shipping Big B in Snow Way, and then she died, and then I was excited, and she was alive, and then she was mad, and then I was like, oh no. Oh no. Poor, poor Big B. I feel so bad for him. Okay, here's Faith, Donkey Skin Girl. Faith, otherwise known as the Donkey Skin Girl, what a horrible name, made it through the exodus from the magical homelands with the clothes on her back, or the donkey skin on her back, her husband, and nothing else. Her husband would have been Prince Lawrence. She was once a beautiful princess, happily married to Prince Lawrence of a neighboring kingdom. Her life should have had a happy ending, but the mundane city of New York wasn't kind to her or her marriage. With no money, Faith found herself turning tricks to make the rent for a cheap apartment on the outskirts of Fabletown. She had a difficult life, but she did what she could to survive in an unfamiliar world. Donkey Skin Girl's a strong girl. We gotta, we gotta come up with a new name for her. That just, mm, not nice. What a great photo they chose for Prince Lawrence. Just, yep, mm-hmm, nice. After escaping the homelands, Prince Lawrence and his wife Faith immediately fell victim to the harsh realities of the mundane world. They moved to New York, hoping to find aid in a community of fellow fables, 
But without enough money to live in Fable Town, they had to settle on an apartment in the outskirts of the neighborhood. Unfortunately, that meant they were out of sight and out of mind when it came to government assistance. Their prospects dwindling, Faith left Lawrence to try to make it on her own. Now without his wife for support, Lawrence struggles to motivate himself and quickly sinks into depression. Oh, yeah, and then he committed suicide. That was really sad. The Tweedles, the hi <laughs> hired goons. Yeah, they're fucking goons, all right. The Tweedle brothers, Dumb and D, are thugs for hire. They appear human, allowing them to carry out their contracts in the money world without drawing suspicion. They are as inseparable as they are ruthless. Yeah, they're definitely suspicious, but I don't know. They're very hard to read, so I don't want to make any decisions there. Oh, I love how they choose like the monster form for their for their pictures. Holly, the trip trap owner. Holly is a no nonsense kind of troll and the owner of the trip trap bar. She's glamoured to appear human, but her patrons know better. Holly takes good care of her regulars, often the downtrodden fables with little to spare, but she has no patience for the Fable Town government that has done nothing to locate her missing sister. Yeah, I, I feel bad. You know, you you have to you have to at least sympathize, if not empathize, with these characters. They all have their own their own tragedies. But hey, we're gonna do our best. Maybe maybe we'll get to that mystery. Maybe we'll find Holly's sister and we can you know work together. But I don't know. Nothing seems to go well in the what is the Mundy world, Fable Town. Right, here's Grendel. Just <laughs> Grendel just wants to be left alone. Oh poor Grendel. In the old days, he terrorized Norse meat halls, but lately he can be found occupying a stool in various quiet, dumpy bars around New York. He hates the noise of the city, but must work there to afford his glamour. Despite his gruff bearing, he is fiercely loyal to those who've learned to offer him the space and silence he desires. Talking to him is like watching a time bomb tick down, it's only a matter of time. Okay, uh, we're not gonna talk to him, if we see him. The magic mirror. Okay, last new one we got here. The magic mirror speaks mostly in rhyme and demands that others do the same. He also requires the name of whatever object or person you wish to find. If you follow these rules, the mirror will show you a glimpse of whatever you want to see, but nothing more. Okay, pretty solid. He's like our neutral character. Alright, let's, let's chit-chat. <laughs> Snow and Buffkin. <laughs> so... Check out anyone who fits that profile. You might start with Bluebeard. Right away, Miss Snow. Are you ready to examine the body now? Yep. Yep. Let's just yeah. do it. Let's oh, just- Oh my goodness! I almost forgot. Come on. I'm surprised Buffkin doesn't have a bottle of whiskey in his hand, but... Hey, you know what? Maybe he's, uh, cutting back. The Witching Well Chamber. The Woodland Building. Oh yeah, I keep hearing- we keep hearing about this- this Witching Well. Is this what they're talking about? Yeah, oh yeah, the Witching Well. So this is just where they... Just throw their... Oh, look it! We got- we got an explanation! Sorry, I'm just, like, <laughs> reading all these, but I think that these are super, super important. Because otherwise... You don't- you don't know their past! You don't- you don't know what to be suspicious of! You- we want to get as much information about everyone and everything. Okay. The Witching Well is located in a chamber inside the Woodland Building, where it is used to dispose of things meant never to be seen again. Dead fables are committed to its depths, as are the most unredeemable criminals. No one is entirely sure what lies at the bottom of the well, nor indeed if it has a bottom at all. Oh my god, that'd be horrifying. Imagine you're just falling forever. Oh, 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 that's dark. I don't want to think of that. <laughs> but it is widely assumed to be the passageway to the final resting place. Yeah, that, that sounds a little better than just eternally falling into the... Depths, never knowing where an end is. That is dark as hell. Alright, should I be like examining things or. No, I guess we're just gonna. Ooh! So 
So I'm assuming glamour doesn't wear off when you're dead. Or maybe it will eventually. Will it eventually turn back into whatever body it was? Because she's dead. She can't buy more. Wow. I didn't realize. I've never seen her face before. It's weird, but I'm going to comfort her. Okay. You don't have to stay. I want to stay. I'll be fine. It's just a little strange. The glamour is so effective, it's invasive. But just do what you need to do. God, it's so weird. Imagine just like finding someone scarily identical to you. Down to the clothes you're wearing, the hairstyle. Oh, God. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I can move. Check her mouth. There might be a ribbon in there, like before. Oh, true. Anything? Nothing. Can you close her mouth? <laughs> okay, my bad, my bad. Thanks. Looks just like Faith's dead. But there was nothing in her mouth this time. Do you think it was done by the same person? Hard to tell. Did Dr. Swinehart ever get back to you about Faith? No. He said he wanted to run more tests. She got your perfume right. How would she know? How do you know what perfume I wear? <laughs> you can't fool this nose. Also, I saw the bottle on your desk. Do you see that? Could be a bruise. That's weird. I don't wear a brooch like that. Why bother with the right perfume if the appearance isn't completely accurate? Maybe it really belonged to her. Not part of the glamour. Looks like something from the homelands. Buffkin, do you recognize these symbols? No, nothing I've seen before. Ah, the book of symbols. We gotta go there next. Do you remember there being a book of symbols? This mystery is about to probably get a whole lot weirder. Okay, we got track marks. Track marks. She used Monday drugs? Looks that way. Pretty heavily, too. I hear they only go for the legs if they've used up the veins in their arms. Or if they're trying to hide the marks. Anyway, it means it's not a perfect match to your leg. Unless... Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Maybe she was trying to compensate with that perfume. Oh my Wait. god. What? If the glamour is supposed to make her look like me, shouldn't it be concealing things like track marks? That brooch, too. Why would it change everything else? I've never seen one this sloppy. It's possible it's designed not to. Designed not to hide track marks? Good point. The witches upstairs know what they're doing. That's why they cost so much. Unless someone is making glamours illegally? That is true. It's not technically illegal, miss. It's not encouraged, for sure, but there aren't any laws specifically forbidding it. So there's some sort of black market for glamours? One would assume so. I imagine anyone with access to the proper books and training could theoretically produce a glamour. Yet another thing to worry about. Black market or not, it's a pretty good match. Look at that. The buttons aren't exact either. There's an extra one here. Yeah, it's just cheap black market glamour. Rope marks. She was tied up? They tied cinder blocks to her ankles. So she would sink. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Pumpkin. <laughs> We're just like laying out all these really dark things. It's like, oh. Her fist is clenched. So she fought back? No marks on the knuckles. Oh. Maybe she was grabbing something? Maybe. Damn, sealed shut. Try it open or leave it alone. Oh gosh, what? Why is this even a choice? I feel like whatever I do, something bad's gonna happen. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna open it. W what are you doing? Only way to find out. Jesus, Bigby. What is it? Flowers. Yeah. Lilac. 
You're right. These buttons are wrong. I wonder... What? Snow, do you mind if I, uh... open her coat? Bigby, just let me do it. Okay. That's why I asked. It's not you, Snow. It's just a body. I... Sorry, that uh, took longer than expected. What have you found out? Her glamour is defective. Oh. Defective? We are thinking it's black market. We should really be regulating this kind of thing. Yes. We should keep going. Oh, uh -huh. use this. What is that? She had the perfume with her. Looks like someone picked it out for her. So, someone gave her instructions. This is getting weird. I've seen things like this before. It's definitely magic, though witches don't usually craft objects these days. I don't think it's wise to fool around with that. It's some kind of black market magic. Who knows what it could do? That's very true. We should have it looked at. Just to make sure it isn't dangerous. Don't you think? I didn't actually know what to say there. <laughs> Just gonna be awkwardly quiet, because I don't want to touch it. What? There's don't shake it. In here. Don't. How do Please. we open it? Please don't. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're we're trying it out anyway. I think I can figure it out. Something to do with these rings here. Oh wait, I actually have to oh great, okay. Um looks like we might just have to align them. Hang on, that's like a moose. That looks right. Is it not? Oh, right, yeah, we need the rest of the moose, I guess. Here we go. I think go. What is that? It's a deer. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. You can tell I've never seen a moose before. Is that. It's your hair. Ew. Kind of like Harry Potter, you know, when they make that potion to look like other people and they like put a bit of the hair and the. I don't know, whatever other nasty stuff. Maybe that's how they're making the black market glamour. Ripping off Harry Potter. Someone must have taken this from my apartment. I noticed it was missing, but I didn't think. This was the last picture I had of Rose and me. My sister and I don't talk much anymore. Who did this, Bigby? She's a troll? You gotta be kidding me. So it does wear off. All right, you can calm down. It's not like you haven't seen a troll before. Who Wait. is she? Is that Holly's sister? That wasn't there before. Who do you think she is? That's Holly's sister. I don't know many trolls, I'm afraid. Should have left them all back in the homelands. Maybe Holly knows. The owner of the trip trap? No, she looks a little... Oh, no. What is it? It's not Holly. It's her sister, Lily. Yeah, I... She I... was reported missing, but I... I guess it just slipped through the cracks. So it's good to read the book. We have to go tell Holly. Right. 
Who knows, she might know something about this. Who Lily was seeing. Well, certainly another troll. Uh, we should go. You can't go out there. Why not? It's too dangerous. Someone tried to kill you. Bigby, you can't let her go out there with you. You'd be putting her life at risk. Hey, Bigby no. is not in charge of me. He's in charge of this investigation. That's nope, not I'm not getting involved. Thing. If Snow wants to come with me, I'm not gonna stop her. But we should leave now. You ready? Yeah. God, what a weird old man. Yeah, things I feel like are definitely rocky between Snow and Bigby, so, you know. I'm gonna stop being less patronizing to her. I feel like that's kind of accidentally what I've been doing, so. This whole thing is complete bullshit and always has been. I mean, what's his job, really? To keep shit from reaching the woodlands. Jack, I don't know where they are. You're a bar. You're supposed to have darts around. And I normally do, but who knows where the fuck they went to after. I'm back! Come on, Holly. I need entertainment. This'll do. Right, that's the guy that doesn't like people talking to him, so we're gonna ignore him. Okay, okay, I know. Just relax. I'm not here to start anything. Okay. Miss White! I heard you had kind of a strange morning. It's been kind of a strange morning for everyone, I think. Every time I see this guy, he seems to lose weight. It's amazing. It really is. He loses weight and yet somehow keeps all the muscle. Jack. Wolfie, my dear, how are you? Okay. Because, weird. you know, we were just talking about you. All of us. At the bar. Here. About you. I just need to talk to Holly. Privately. All right. Just give us a second first. I'm dying to hear about the body that came out of the East River this morning. It was a fable, right? Oh, everyone knows. Tweedledee was just here. He said it looked like Snow White. What the hell, Crane? Sorry. Tweedledee said you arrested him for no earthly reason. Kept him locked in the cellar all fucking night. Oh, great. He said you tortured him. Which... I don't know, that seems like a breach of your legislative duties. Bigby, come on. You can't be so dumb as Jack, to- Jack, find the off button, now. Yeah, for what real. What is it with you two? Cancel. You and Gran are all, let's get a posse together when there's no one around. But as soon as the big bad wolf walks in, your tails go between your legs. Cat got your nerve. What happened? What happened? I'm tired is what happened. Tired of what? Of trouble, Jack. I'm sick and tired of trouble. I don't want any more. Jack. What? Bigby, look. Two fables are dead. And shit, Gren's sister... Holly's sister. Holly's sister has been missing for what? A few days now? And we haven't heard word one about it from anyone. Actually, have there been any updates? On my sister. Holly, your sister's dead. She's the one we found early this morning. Boy, I sure walked into that one. If you say one more fucking thing, just one more thing. Okay, we know you don't like people. God fucking damn it. Of course, the dear princess Snow fucking White is all safe and sound. Where were you when we reported this weeks ago, huh? Where are you when we ever fucking need you? Oh boy. I don't want to fight again. You'd give one ounce of a shit about her, about any of us. She might have been saved. She might have been cared for. She might have been... <sighs> All right, everyone. Clear out. I ain't leaving her with you. No way.
Holly. Get the fuck out of my bar. I just want to... It should have been you. It should have been you, and it wasn't. Just give her some space. We recovered this from her personal effects. I thought you might like to have it. I... I didn't know she still had this. <sighs> the copper was from a dwarf mine. It's very rare. A dwarf and mine? very old. That was decent of you. Grin. Yeah? Take off for a bit, would you? Are you sure? <laughs> wow, Snow just has a way. She's always one step ahead of me. She's fantastic. I don't know that much about her life. Honestly, we didn't talk often. She was lost here, in the city. She just got swept away by it. Do you have any idea why she'd be glamoured as Snow White? What? Oh god, I'm sorry. That was probably about... She was hooking to pay down debt. It ain't me up to see her that way. Oh! Eventually, the only people she owed were at her work. You know, that shithole club, the pudding and pie. Pudding and pie? The owner, Georgie, with all his fucking fees. It's a crock of shit. That's how they kept her under their thumb, really. Holly, it's okay. If it's too much, we don't have to do this. Pudding and pie, huh? What do you know about the place? It's a real garbage dump. We can just go check it out. We've got a lead. Maybe we can take it from here? <laughs> Lily. Thanks for everything, Holly. Is there, um, is there anything we can do to- No. No, I'm better off dealing with things alone. I don't need sympathy and I don't need charity. It's not charity. It's looking out for our own. Is she? Where is she? She's at the business office. She's taken care of. I'm gonna have to go down there and get her. Fuck. Please, we can handle the funeral arrangements. No, no, it's it's a kind of... It, it's a formality with trolls. Oh. We burn our dead by sunrise or... I don't know. Some old world shit will fuck your soul up. Fair enough. Of course. Okay. Good. Let's go down to the business office and start making the necessary preparations, all right? I think that went so well. That club? I'll go down there now. See what I can find out from the owner. You were good with her. I'm impressed. <laughs> really? Thanks. It just made everything easier. Do it! We both did a good job. See, this is what I'm saying. We're such a good team. Oh, <laughs> guess I didn't get that fixed, huh? Sister, sisterly love. Okay, okay. Now, now of course we need to check out our new entries here. I thought this was just about people, but um, I see an elevator here now. <laughs> the thirteenth floor of the Woodland Building is home to a group of witches and wizards tasked with the protection of Fable Town. They use their powers to keep the community hidden from prying mundy eyes, but all magic has its limit, and every spell has its cost. Oh, you know, this is, I think this is going to be a perfect reference, so I'm not sure if you guys watched a show called Once Upon a Time. I never finished it, but I did watch quite a bit of it, and I really did enjoy it. And I just remember um, the, the, the character that was the magic dealer in the show. I'll kind of spare the names, and he always said... Oh, what was it? I, <laughs> no, it was, it was something like, everything comes with a price. Even, even if it's, I think it had to do with magic and 
you know, that sort of thing. Anything always had its consequences, so that completely makes sense why they have limits and they have th- there's those consequences to that magic. And I'm I'm kind of curious. Maybe we're not there yet, but I want to know if we're going to be able to talk to the witches and wizards because I think they would be immensely helpful in this investigation, especially with this glamour thing. They obviously have perfected their art with magic. They'd be able to look at you know a knockoff version and be able to totally pull that apart. I don't know, I feel like they could probably give some pretty good insight, but maybe maybe we'll get there. You know, maybe we're just kind of dealing with things on our own first, but I'd also want to talk to them and, you know, they're probably some of the most powerful, well, obviously they're witches and wizards, most powerful with the magic. I feel like they would know kind of the extent, the limits, all of this. I, we definitely need to talk to them. I hope we do. I feel like we could get some really good insight there, but hey, maybe, maybe we're gonna get there soon. Okay, here's that, the symbol, the troll cross. So a troll cross is an amulet made of iron that was foolishly thought to protect the wearer from trolls. Lily acquired hers while wandering through the wilderness searching for something to eat. She came across a human, but before she could ever devour him, he held the troll across, held the troll cross out and shouted, Back! Back, you troll! <laughs> After enjoying her tasty snack, oh my god, Lily plucked the cross from the dead man's hands. After the exodus, she wore the troll cross constantly as a reminder of better days. Oh, so she... Okay, she liked uh, eating the humans. That, that was the, the good days for her. Fair enough. And, well, here she is now, Lily, the estranged sister. Lily and her sister Holly grew up in the homelands together, but had a falling out shortly after moving to the mundane world. Aimless and increasingly destitute, Lily turned to prostitution and now she's the second victim in an ongoing murder investigate. Oh, wait, hang on. Okay, so I think we know that Faith is kind of involved in this similar business as Lily. Now, now I'm thinking that there, there could be a chance that Faith isn't dead and maybe it was some kind of, well, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I, maybe there's glamour or not. I don't know. Maybe we need to go back and look at Faith's head and see if it changed. If not, I would assume then that would be the real Faith and she's actually dead. I don't know. I'm just trying to make connections here that might not really be connections yet, but clearly there's something going on at the, the pudding and pie. And Jack Horner, the harmless trickster. Is this like Jack and Jill? Maybe. Not sure. Jack is always up to something, but he's not nearly as smart as he thinks he is. His plans to get rich quick often backfire, but his confidence never wavers. He thinks he's the most important person in Fable Town, but everyone knows him as a mostly harmless smartass. Sounds about right. Kind of like it reminds me of Prince Charming from Shrek. I don't know, kind of gives me that vibes, you know, the blonde hair, and he's like, oh, my hair, fairy godmother, and, you know, all that stuff, but. All right, I think we kind of seen, seen all of this new stuff. We're missing some stuff here. I don't, I, I would assume that those will fill in with time, but I think it's definitely been super beneficial to read these because, you know, probably would have best out some leads if we didn't know everybody's story, but. I do enjoy these. They're really, really interesting, especially since I'm not too familiar with the fables. I believe it's a comic series. I only kind of know those classic fairy tale characters, you know, the really sugar-coated movies and TV shows. Um, yeah, I don't know about this guy that decapitates all his wives. It's pretty, uh, pretty messed up, but hey, this is all new to me and I like, I like reading it. This is probably one of my favorite parts, so I'm really, really liking this system we have. Alright guys, so I'm going to end this video here. I really am happy with how things are starting to go. I feel like we had a little bit of a rocky start. We came off as kind of violent and, it, you know, it... I'm trying to be the big good wolf here, but I keep somehow turning into the big bad wolf. But, I think we reconciled things with, well, not really, but kind of with TJ, Little Toad, Toad Jr. 
I'm just kind of trying to build that relationship back that we kind of broke by slapping the crap out of his dad. But hey, you know what, that'll be- that's a- that's a work in progress. I think Snow was also a little bit mad with me, Big B, kind of trying to protect her and say be careful and all that, and then, you know, I kind of realized, you know, we should probably take a step back, let her do her thing. We just hope that she doesn't actually get killed, but... I don't know. Fingers crossed on that, but... I really- I'm- I am actually pleasantly surprised with how that bar scene went. I was really scared we were gonna end up getting another Big Bad Wolf fight, but... Snow White was able to kind of de-escalate Holly, and then we were able to kind of slip in and... help make things better. We're a pretty good team, and I think just kind of trusting Snow will be good enough from Big B to help Make sure that they work as a really good team. So I'm really liking how this is going. We have some leads. Obviously, Faith is still kind of up in the air. We don't really know what's going on there. But we have a lead for the, the pudding pie place from Holly. So I believe that that's where we're going to go next. But I'm also hoping we, at some point, we could talk to the witches and wizards. You know, I'm, I'm sure they're like all wise, you know, with big long beards and stuff and witch hats. And they're like, hmm, we know everything. You know, here's our magic. <laughs> I, I really hope we can get a little bit of insight there. I'm sure they'll know the magic limits and the costs and the consequences and all that stuff. Because clearly there's a lot more than just glamour. There's cheap glamour, there's regular glamour, there's memory wipe spells, there's probably a whole slew of other magic and who knows? Who knows what's going on? But I'm sure we'll figure it out soon. Maybe not. This story keeps getting confusing, but I actually love it. I'm so intrigued. I really like this game. And yeah, that's all. I'm going to stop talking because I want to keep playing. So I'll end this video here. And in the next video, we will pick up from here. So I will see you all then. Bye.